This week in IT, Microsoft Teams is putting one of the best features of Windows Server 2025 behind a paywall. Arch Linux is now officially supported in Windows. And Windows Recall and Improved Search finally get launched on ARM Copilot Plus PCs. So stay tuned for all the latest. Welcome to This Week in IT, the show where I talk about everything connected to Microsoft 365, Windows and Azure. But before I get started today, I've got a quick favour to ask you. 28% of all the watch time on last week's video came from people who were not subscribed to the channel. Now, as we go live today, we're on about 11,720 subscribers and I'd love it if we could push that up to 11,750 this week. So if you'd like to see these weekly news roundups from Petri.com, please subscribe to the channel and don't forget to hit the bell notification to make sure that you don't miss out on the latest uploads. Now this came as a little bit of a surprise to me this week. If you remember back to Windows Server 2022 Azure edition, Microsoft introduced a feature called Hot Patching, which essentially allowed you to install security patches for up to three months without needing to reboot the server. Now, that feature was exclusive to people who subscribe to the Azure edition of Windows Server. Now, one of the best features of Windows Server 2025, which was uh, released last year, was the addition of Hot Patching to on-premises. Windows Server because previously it had only been available in the Azure edition which is only available either in the cloud or if you're running uh, you know, Azure stack or whatever it's called these days uh, on premises but obviously that's something that can really only be afforded by bigger organizations. So this week Microsoft announced that by the beginning of July, if you're using the hot patching feature in Windows Server 2025, you will be automatically charged a fee for every CPU on your server for the month in order to have the privilege of using hot patching essentially. So it seems a little bit of a, well, we're going to let you test this feature out for free. And then suddenly we're going to announce that, well, actually we're going to charge you for it uh, going forwards. Now, as far as I know, Microsoft never announced the plans for a subscription model for hot patching for on-premises Windows Server. This is absolutely something new to me. Maybe it's something that went under the radar that they had spoken about before, but not something that I'd ever read. So what does this mean for organizations that are using this feature or want to use this feature on premises? Well, obviously, you know, this comes as an additional cost to the license that you already pay for Windows Server. So now you've got a bit of a hybrid model of, you know, a licensing and subscription, but you know, you could obviously argue that if you have something like software assurance, you're already in a kind of a subscription model. So the good news, starting July the 1st, if you're using Windows Server 2025 Standard or Data Center Edition, which are both required in order to access the hot patching feature, you also need to have these servers connected to Azure Arc in order to configure hot patching, you're going to be charged just $1.50 per CPU core. So actually, it might not work out that expensive for organizations, obviously, depending on the number of devices you have running Windows Server and all the rest of it. So why this comes as a little bit of a blow in some respects compared to the actual cost of licensing Windows Server itself, the hot patching feature is coming at a probably fairly reasonable price, in my opinion. But nevertheless, this is probably something that organizations hadn't planned for in their budget. So I think the question now for many organizations is going to be, is it worth paying extra for hot patching? Does it really make a difference to operations? And of course, that's going to depend on your business or organization, you know, the issues you might have with downtime on a server for rebooting or whatever the case may be. So I think you're going to have to look at whether this is something that's worth paying for, you know, even if it's not, you know, something that's really uh, good for business in terms of a business requirement, it might be good for your IT team. It might help them to do more because it's an extra thing that they don't have to worry about planning the downtime and reboot of a server every month, which is obviously something that takes up some of their bandwidth. So I think you have to look at the benefits for the IT department, for the business 
Is it something that's worth paying for? What are the costs compared to the actual license of Windows Server? And I think in many cases, it probably is worth the additional cost. So what do you think? Is this Microsoft gradually edging on-premises Windows Server to a fully subscription-based model? Let me know what you think in the comments below. And would this push you to move more of your workloads to the cloud? Or does your business rely on on-premises processing and you wouldn't move regardless of what the cost might be. I'd love to know what you think. I remember a time when Microsoft was talking a lot about the Windows subsystem for Linux. You know, it would be mentioned a lot and promoted a lot at every build conference. This is really a feature for developers just to help them stay on Windows essentially to be able to do the work that they need to do in Linux without having to have another device or run Linux in a virtual machine. And it's been fairly popular among developers as far as I've understood. Now this week it was announced that Arch Linux is now officially supported in WSL, so that's the Windows subsystem for Linux version 2. And a Linux developer has been working on an official image and that is now available in the Microsoft Store. Now it's relatively easy to install a Linux image in WSL. It just takes, I think you can do it even in one command line. It's relatively easy. Arch Linux apparently has a fairly big user base. I mean, I'm not a Linux person at all. I've dabbled with it at points in the past, but I know very little about the Linux world. But I have heard of Arch Linux. I do think it is a fairly popular distribution. So it's great now that that's another option for people who want to get on and install Linux quickly and use it in a relatively lightweight environment on Windows. You know, so the point of using the subsystem for Linux is that it just has a lot less overhead than the virtual machine. It's designed to be really easy to get Linux images up and running very quickly. And there's a lot of integration with the operating system so you don't feel you're working in a completely different environment in a VM to do your development work. It's all kind of integrated. I believe it can also be integrated with things like Visual Studio Code, uh, which is also great. So it helps to streamline the whole development process for developers. Windows Recall, we're talking about this again. This has been like an ongoing trend train crash essentially over the last year. A uh, quick reminder of what happened. Microsoft officially launched Windows Recall last year at the same time when they announced the new ARM-based Copilot Plus PCs. They very quickly withdrew the product because there was a lot of complaints and concern over security. Some researchers found that essentially it was storing information in plain text on users' devices, which you know you can argue is a problem, a lot of problem. Microsoft, Microsoft argued that it wasn't a problem, and I accept that argument to a certain extent, but it didn't make people feel good that this had been well thought out. If you remember, Windows Recall is this application that essentially takes screenshots of everything you're doing on your device periodically. Then it uses uh, optical character recognition and other technolog technologies to kind of analyze what's on that screenshot and it allows you to search. So you can, you know, if you're looking, I don't know, to buy a red pair of pants, you can ask it to bring up, you know, uh, that time when you were looking for a red pair of pants and it will go off and you know, return you to that point in time, if you like. It's a bit like a history. Now, I've never used this feature. I don't have a Copilot Plus PC. Uh, I've heard that it's pretty useful from those that have used it. Now it is finally officially available. Now at this stage, it's only available for Copilot Plus PCs that are running ARM processors. And Microsoft has said that, okay, it will be available later in the year for other Copilot Plus PCs. So you're going to have to wait a bit longer for that. It's still ARM exclusive at this point. So we'll see what the reaction and feedback to this now is. It's now an optional component. You know, you have to install it, I believe. It's not there by default. Uh, and Microsoft have made all sorts of uh, additional security improvements, even controls for organizations, as far as I understand, if you want to have more granular or centralized control over Windows Recall. Also rolling out are the improvements to Windows Search. So anywhere, any access point to Windows Search uh, in the operating system now, 
is now backed by AI. So essentially what that means is that you can search using natural language and this is a real boost to the uh, inbuilt search. So again, I have no idea how this really works in practice. I don't have access to one of these devices. If you do, I'd love to know what you think of this as this starts to roll out. But if it works as well as natural language search in Microsoft 365 Copilot does, then this should be a great addition to Windows. There's also click to do. So this is a feature where, you know, for instance, you're in a web browser, you highlight an image or you select a piece of text and it gives you a list of options of things that you might want to do with that selection using AI. So for instance, if you, I don't know, select a piece of text in a browser, it might offer you to create a summary or to rewrite it. Again, don't have access to this technology, but Maybe it's useful, you know, maybe not, <laughs> I don't know. Um, but it's just another way to give you quick access to artificial intelligence within the operating system. Now, it's interesting that I was speaking to Stephen Rose for Petri Dish uh, a couple of days ago. The episode is now live. You can go and check it out. We were talking about some of the uh, Spring Wave 2 releases that we also discussed on this channel last week. And he said that there are only about 20 million people using the Copilot, the free Copilot and Copilot Pro. So everything that's for consumers compared to around 400 million who are using ChatGPT. So obviously Microsoft really needs to do something there to improve that. We didn't discuss Microsoft 365 Copilot usage figures. I don't think that's something that's ever been published or revealed, but Microsoft has a long way to go if they want to compete with chat GPT, that's for sure. And I think, you know, it's just been a bit of a mess. When isn't anything that Microsoft does a bit of a mess, to be honest. And, you know, for whatever reason, people will prefer chat GPT at this stage. Maybe it's because, you know, chat GPT is just synonymous now with AI, much like Google is kind of synonymous with search. But, you know, maybe it's because, you know, Copilot that's built into Windows just isn't as good. That could also be a reason. But let's see how that goes. Uh, I've actually been using the Copilot that's built into Windows quite a lot. I do have a, a license for ChatGPT, but I don't know. I see the icon there. I click it. If it's just something basic that I need to do, I don't feel the need to necessarily open up ChatGPT. Um, but obviously, you know, if it's something a bit more complicated, then I tend to go to ChatGPT just because I know that's where I'm going to get the most functionality. And again, partly because I have a license to do that. But anyway, let me know what you think about these features and whether you have a Copilot Plus PC. I'd love to know what you think. If you found this video useful, I'd really appreciate it if you gave it a thumbs up because it helps to get it seen by more people on YouTube. I'm going to leave another video on the screen now where I talk about those Microsoft 365 Copilot updates that are coming to users in May. So do check that out. But that's it from me for this week. I'm on vacation next week, so we're going to be missing next week, but I'll see you in two weeks. Take care and see you then.